mind's tendency is to wander. That's the, what the word samsara means. Samsara is not a place, it's an activity, it's something the mind does. We think of it mainly as what the mind does as it goes from one life to the next. But it's a basic principle in the Buddha's teachings that the larger pattern can be seen here in the smaller pattern, what the mind does from one moment to the next. And particularly how it goes from one, what in Pali they call bhava, or state of being, to the next. These little worlds in the mind. And why does the mind wander? Because it doesn't like where it is. But its wandering is pretty aimless. If you were to take a map of your mind today, where did it go? What would the lines look like? They'd be scribbled all over the place. It'd look like a bird's nest. And what did you get out of your wanderings? A little pleasure, a little pain. But the fact that the mind has to keep creating these places where it's going, that means there's a stress built into the whole process. So what the Buddha proposes that you do is that you learn how to settle down in the present moment, even though this is a bhava as well, it's a state of being. It's one that's already here. And when you stay right here, you get to see the process in action. In other words, to keep you from floating off in those little worlds, the Buddha has you fully inhabit the world of your body right here. The steps of breath meditation start out by being aware of short breathing and long breathing. And once you get sensitive to the breathing, then the next process is to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in and breathe out. And then to calm the breath process. In other words, try to make it comfortable. Make this enlarged sense of the mind your home. The sense of the body with the, the breathing easy coming in, easy going out, whatever the breath is most suited for the needs of the body right now. Experiment to see what that is. If you're feeling sleepy, you may want to use heavier breathing to keep you awake. If you're feeling tense, you want to try more relaxed breathing, gentler breathing. In other words, explore the potentials of what you've got right here, right now. One of the basic concepts in the Buddhist teachings is of dhatu, sometimes translated as element, sometimes translated as potential or property. And potential is probably the closest, the closest meaning. Throughout your sense of the body, there's there's a potential to feel movement or energy. That's the breath or the wind element. There's the potential for cool sensations, there's a potential for warm sensations, there's a potential for heavy sensations. And the ones you focus on are the ones that tend to get emphasized, that tend to be stirred up. The, the Pali word is provoked. The potential is lying there very still or in a subtle form, and as you focus on it, you amplify it. And we tend to do this in a very unskillful way. We've never thought about it systematically. We've never really explored what can be done in order to master this, these different potentials. So that's one of the things you do as you meditate. You start out with the breath element. There's a potential for breath in the whole body sense of movement, a sense of energy that fills the nerves, that fills the blood vessels, all the way out to the pores. And what 
kind of awareness emphasizes that. Try right, to think of the body, just your awareness of the body as all breath. Every sensation is a variety of breathing or breath energy. It might be still breath, moving breath, either related to the in and out breath or just something that's constantly there of its own. And John Lee makes the distinction between visiting breaths, which, is, which are the in and out breaths, and the sort of inhabiting breaths, the ones that are there all the time, the potentials that are there all the time. What you do as you focus is you tend to emphasize one potential over another. So try to learn how to fine-tune your focus so that you're emphasizing sensations that have a potential for ease, comfort. In other words, learn how to make the present moment a good place to stay. This is going to be your home for a while. So clean it up, decorate it nicely. Get a sense of how to inhabit the body in a comfortable way. For once you're feeling more and more at ease here, more and more familiar with the, the terrain, knowing where your spot is in the body. In other words, which points in the body are like nodes in the energy system. You focus on the nodes and you're in touch with the whole system. And the mind can calm down more easily, feel more refreshed, more energized. Once you know those spots, then you want to be able to go there at any time. So you can tap into this sense of ease, the sense of fullness that comes when the breath energy potentials are all activated throughout the body in a way that feels refreshing, in a way that feels really absorbing. Once you've got this sense of being at home, then you can change your relationship to the, all those other worlds that you've tended to wander through. You can look at them and you see. You see them as isolated events, like little balloons going through your head. And do you want to follow those balloons? Because sometimes they land in all kinds of places. I was reading a while back about the people who go ballooning from Temecula. They head up and then they don't really know where they're going to end. And they actually have more control over their balloons than we have over their balloons in our minds. So when you start looking at the different worlds that you could inhabit, when you learn how to look at them from the outside, i.e. look at them from this position of being fully at home in the body, you're in a much better position to decide which balloons are worth getting involved with it and which ones are not, which ones are worth encouraging. Now, each of these balloons is also a type of potential. Which potential do you want to focus on and develop, and which ones are not going to be really helpful, useful? in any way at all. But it's simply once you develop a sense of rapture here, as the Buddha said, that's your food. Not only do you have a home here, but you've also got a source of food in your home. And you look at all the other places that you like the mind like to go feeding, and you realize you don't really get much out of it. If you're a homeless person, you end up feeding off of garbage feeding off of things, scraps that other people have thrown away. It's not very really good for you. You're now in a position where you have better home, better food, and you just lose your interest. Simply having the mind have a good solid basis of concentration like this is one step in learning how to lose interest in the other things that you used to feed on. That's what's meant by Nibida, disenchantment, disgust, however you translate it. Disgust in the sense of it used to be food that you used to like, but now you've got something better and you just don't want to go there. Like the cat I mentioned this afternoon. I had a cat in college. I fed it oatmeal. And one summer when I went home, I left it with some friends. And the friends fed it good cat food. When it came back that fall, I took the cat back and tried to feed it oatmeal, and it refused. 
It knew there was better food in this world. And your mind, when it gets better fed through the meditation, it loses its interest in a lot of other, those other worlds. This is the discernment that comes through the practice of concentration. Ultimately, you get to the point where you have to learn how to outgrow the food, even of the concentration. But until you reach that point, it's going to be quite a while before you reach that point. Until you reach that point, learn how to appreciate the food you've got here, the home, the potential home you've got here, the potential comfort, the potential of all these different elements in the body that you can focus on and learn how to maximize when you need them. Once you're more purposeful in taking advantage of this potential home here in the body, you can also be more purposeful in your wanderings, the times when you do need to think about other things, plan for the future, recollect the past. And as for the thought balloons, just float aimlessly around, you just let them go. When you don't focus on those potentials, then they just pass. This way you're, there's a lot more use, usefulness, there's a lot more gain from your comings and goings and your stayings right here. So as long as the mind wants to inhabit something, learn how to inhabit what you've got here. As John Lee used to say, you've got this field here. It can grow all kinds of crops. So don't go around trying to grow crops in other people's fields. Don't try growing. Don't go trying to grow crops in the sky. You've got a good field here with good soil. Make the most of it. When you've got a good home, got a good food, you find yourself much less inclined to wander aimlessly around. And that cuts through a lot of unnecessary suffering right there. It also means that when the time comes when you actually are facing death, you'll have practice in not just wandering off at whatever pops into your mind. It's an important skill. It's an important thing to remember. That's this little process of wandering around in your thoughts. It's precisely what causes you to wander around from one life to the next. So if you master the process now, learn to bring it on at least under some control. That skill will serve you in good stead. even in the most difficult situations in life.